So my, my name's Matthew, and um, I, I kind of use this, this the emoji dog as my logo, but I normally recolor him as like blue and blue. Um, so, like, I, I, I guess I guess everyone knows about Meteor, and like I, I still really like the the properties of like what Meteor brings to to to, to client side development. Um, in particular, like I guess if you've done the, the examples from the site, then like this is my browser, this is someone else's browser. I go and like add a party, and like instantly it synchronizes with all clients. And like Meteor does other cool stuff as well. Like actually, if I roll out a new version of my application, then everyone gets it updated. Um, so Meteor is great, but it's kind of all or nothing. Like you kind of you buy into the stack and you buy into MongoDB, and you buy into like, their sort of data synchronization, um, and you're probably going to end up buying into their sort of containerization solution after 1.0 as well. So um, this, this is the uh, um, announcement, like sort of final, final announcement of like 1.0 is going to be, um, but like that's me, and I'm kind of playing on my phone. So <laughs> um, I, I love it, but like uh, um, I'm not really buying into it right now. But so, so, so what, what can we steal from Meteor? Um, what can we learn from them? And this is their, this is their set of, of bullet points about what they think is good about Meteor. So it's pure JavaScript, like it does live page updates. Um, so pure JavaScript maybe doesn't matter because actually I like that separation between the server and the client. Live page updates, well, Ember and Handlebars kind of gets us that. Um, clean, powerful data synchronization is pretty cool. We don't have that. Latency compensation doesn't really mean anything, but the idea is kind of like a fire and forget, and then we get a call back and says, this update failed and we, we resurrect the state. Hot code pushes is, is actually also another cool thing, um, and I don't have a solution for that, but I think that's a deployment framework rather than a web development framework. Um, and I think Meteor kind of combines those two things, but actually we can build this separately. But um, So sensitive code runs in a privileged environment, and that's it's kind of a compromise. If you're not going to have a, a protected server, then you have to have sensitive code somewhere. So like, generally, let's have a server and an API, and we'll do sensitive stuff there. Um, and it's fully self-contained application bundles. And that's true. Like, you can take your, your Meteor application, and you can bundle it, and you can run it inside any node container. But it's not quite true as well, because you still have to get all this sort of MongoDB um, data synchronization and like ongoing, basically you're gonna have MongoDB with like multiple like read-only slaves and it's gonna, because if you actually wanna scale Meteor then it's a different problem. Um, and interoperability is actually, their point about interoperability is that actually we can run Meteor on like a Raspberry Pi or something. It's like, we can use it for different purposes other than, other than serving web applications. And smart packages, doesn't really matter. It's just how they package Meteor. So ignore that. So I kind of went through and said, oh yeah, some of them I care about, some of them I don't. <laughs> um, but the thing that actually maybe we can tackle right now is clean, powerful data synchronization. So we create some data here. Um, and if anyone can read Chinese, what does it say? Oh man. Um, it says, which means your face is very beautiful. Um, but suddenly we're going to synchronize it here, and here, and here. So perhaps if we, if we want to kind of right now like reproduce the functionality of Meteor's data synchronization, synchronization, we should use Firebase, because Firebase is a kind of well-funded startup. It's kind of, um, I said it was a hosted JSON object store with built, well, doesn't make sense, built for, for data <laughs> synchronization. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> and that's what it is. It's basically a, 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 a web API, a REST API, where the URL defines the object. So looking at this, we jump into the, the players, and the players has, for each key, we can go and access that URL, and incrementally we get like a dig into the data, and it's all URL-based. Um, and they are also all hosted on the Firebase I.O. domain. Um, so how would we use it with Firebase's API? Um, write our very long URL 
and inc like instantiate a Firebase object. And then fundamentally, like you have this reference, but because everything's asynchronous and it's all about synchronization, like you can't just directly access the object. Um, so actually, if we're talking about an, an array or a thing that approximates an array, we have to then go and listen to the child added event and then start pushing it into our, into our local object store. So in this case, we take, we instantiate a player's array, which initiates nothing. And as soon as we've, we, we've listened to the child added event, then it will start pushing the data into there. But the, and even though that, that's kind of annoying, but we do actually get incremental incre like calls on, on, on that callback as well. So whenever any child is added from any client, we still get it added to our player as object. And there's also other, the, the, the core events are child added, child removed, and child changed. And there's another one that's called value, which is like, gives you the whole object. Um, and get called whenever the object changes. But I'm gonna ignore that for now. So we wanna load up Ada Lovelace. So we can literally, we just loaded, in the previous screen, we loaded the, the ref, which is our player's object, and we're gonna get the child, which happens to be dash j836, um, 2v, whatever. But, like, but what's cool about it is that this is always gonna be a unique ID, and we can just treat it as like a, as, as like a unique ID. So we get Ada, and we're gonna set her name to Augusta Ada Byron, which apparently is her, her born name. Um, and like immediately we'll get like an update of the, the data on every client, right? And that, that's, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, but importantly, in that case, we lost the, the score. So there's an alternative thing, which is update, which only changes that, that field. Um, so set is for like, um, taking over the whole object, replacing the whole object and, and update just updates the fields we've given it. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, and so Albert, so actually the reference here for players is actually in a, we can treat it as an array and we can just push another object into there and it will go and appear on the bottom um, as like a, a new unique ID object. And again, every client who's already listening to the players, ob the players array will get a new child added. And um, because we've already, we're listening to child added, we'll get that called again, and we'll end up with Albert as a, the last player in our, in our player's array. So Firebase also does like way more stuff, and in particular, like it does authentication. So we can use Firebase not just as a data store, but we can use it to, as an authentication like platform as well, which then ties into the data store. So permissioning is also then very important because how do we decide who can read and write our data and like actually, my demo, like right now, anyone can change anything because there was no permissions. Um, and you can also do ranges because we don't necessarily want to load up like an array of a million objects um, and ordering and all this stuff. So it's a dot, dot, dot. So Firebase are like, again, they're, they're well funded. Um, they've been around like for like, over a year. Um, and there had been attempts to implement like Ember, Ember uh, adapters. Like particularly there was a thing called uh, Ember Data Firebase Adapter. Um, but it was before the Ember Data Beta. So it's now at least to be rewritten. But about a month ago or so, um, Firebase like, launched like, what they call like, Fi Ember Fire, which is their officially supported um, Ember adapter. Um, you can see it on their, their, their GitHub. But t to be honest, like, I don't think that their version works because <laughs> no, no one's using it. So um, they've gone through and there's like a thing called Angular Fire. There's like Backfire, which is the backbone version of it. And I think they've, they don't have any tests and they've just written like, they've, they've, they've created adapters, but they haven't really maintained them and they don't necessarily work. So um, I, Instead of like writing a talk, I basically spent most of my time trying to rewrite Ember Fire, um, and I've rerun it in two different ways, and I'm still waiting for them to decide which one they want to they want to pull. But basically, it, it can be explained like this: so we have an Ember Fire object, and we're going to use Ember's like object proxy, which just lets us 
create like an Ember object type thing, but actually we're not directly accessing a, an object, we're, we're proxying them. So, so we set a ref, and literally whenever the value changes, we just update the content. Um, and what's cool about this proxy is that we can keep the reference separate to the object and we can use it to, to listen for events. And obviously, like once we've instantiated this, it will just update itself whenever the data changes. So if we can get that into our entire application, it will just update the view. And because it's an Ember object proxy, Handlebars already knows how to render this and already has the right bindings. Um, so this is in the wrong order, but so basically we're trying to wrap, how can we wrap Firebase into Ember objects? So the other thing, which is like my idea, because I like, um, because I, I literally just want to have an array of objects. And actually the current Ember <coughs> file array doesn't necessarily get you an Ember object. So Ember file array proxy is basically the same thing, but we have to store both the content and like these sort of ID equivalent um, references. So actually, we only need to look at like child added and child removed. So whenever there's a, a child added, we need to add both the content and the reference and make sure it's the, that that's it basically. And then removing is literally just removing those two things. Um, and there is a lot more work as well because you need to, uh, this only deals with data changing on the server and we also have to deal with data changing from within our own application. But the, the general point is that we should, we should change, we should send data changes to, to Firebase and Firebase should um, inform us via the, the event callbacks. So actually we don't ever want to change these things directly, but we'll let Firebase tell us to change them. And the benefit of that is that we can, there's only one place where we actually change this core data. And equally, a consequence is probably not so great is that if we want to change an object, then I assume it goes to the server before it files it back, files it back, I don't know. Maybe. So, um, based on what we were doing before, like, like this is like literally how I do it in my example application, is instead of creating a Firebase object directly, I can just create an Ember Fire object array and I can just do it and it just works. And on the same data, it just works. Um, so given our previous example, we can just take Ada, who happens to be the last object on the list, and increment her score and it should just work. Um, but, so, so when I first started looking at Firebase, I kind of realized that I had this kind of dream, which was kind of to kill Meteor. Um, and um, so, so I, I came up with like a logo, first of all. <laughs> um, um, and also a, a, Git, a GitHub um, project. So literally I, I want to take every Meteor example and find a way that we can um, tidily like re-implement that, that whole thing in, in Ember. Um, so the only one I've got to do so far is leaderboard, which actually is really, really simple. But I spent so much time trying to get M Firebase to work properly that I got stuck on it. But let's, let's take that and let's make it all Ember. Um, so the, the, the one I've actually done is leaderboard. So our example is just a, just a subset of what the thing is, but the core of it is like Meteor gives you these collection objects, which is basically a proxy onto um, a Mongo store that gets synchronized. So players is just a Mongo store called players. Um, and importantly, Meteor, you write this, the same, same code that runs on the client or the server. We have to kind of ask if we're the client or the server. And in this case, we only want the client to do it. Um, so in order, I guess this, this just looks like Mongo, right? It's kind of noisy. Um, but one thing I really don't like about Meteor is that if we want to provide sort of view helpers, we end up kind of appending functions onto these sort of template objects. Um, maybe there's a better way to do it, but that's the way they do it in their own example. So I guess that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but equally, like, they do use handlebars. So it does just look like, uh, an, like a handlebars loop. But so I, I've rewritten this in, in Ember and there's a whole load more work, but generally 
Um, this is using Ember data, and we just sort like via computed sorting, um, and we just loop it, and, it, and it, it works in a similar way, but it's it's got more structure. And perhaps perhaps that's not Meteor's fault, but the fault of the example. Um, but then, if we try and add in like Ember Fire, it does work, but because Ember Fire is a different object, we don't have which doesn't actually quite work with the Ember computed properties. We can't do like the Ember sort. We have to create an array proxy that um, filters it. Um, but it pretty much just works the same way. Um, like I, I think the next step is to go back to the old Ember Data Firebase adapter and build a new Ember Data Firebase adapter that fits into how Ember Data Beta works, and particularly like the separation between serializers and adapters and, and all these bits, which actually should work ongoing. Um, but so there's still a lot of work, and like I'm still only on leaderboard example um, and my own like fork of, of Ember Fire. So if anyone like wants to kill Meteor, that'd be really cool if you could help me out. <laughs> um, otherwise, um, I've been at Mafiudi, so so thanks. Uh, any questions? So I guess yeah, go on. <laughs> your grievances with Ember Fire as it currently stands. Um, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, no, so, so, so it, it, it's no testing. Um, I just refactored it because I, I, I think some of the ways to do some things I don't, I don't particularly agree with. The problem is mostly literally because they don't, they haven't, they haven't really used it for beyond like the really simplest use case. So, particularly if you want to take an array of, of Ember objects or well, Ember Fire objects, it just doesn't work. And um, I think we can make it work just in the way that, that we expect. But I, I got loads of bugs, basically, and um, that's simple to fix. So actually, I'm refactoring it separately from fixing the bugs. The bugs are fixed, but they haven't been pulled yet. Um, separately, we're, I'm refactoring it because I want to I make it look a, like Ember data, basically. You, you may not know this, but I noticed the last commit to Ember Fire was authored by Stefan Panner. Does he work at Firebase, or does he just have commit access to their repo? I don't know. It was like 14 days ago or something, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So that's not the person who's been communicating with me. I've been right. talking to some, someone else. Oh, right. OK. okay. I'm I'm I've, assumed that, I've assumed that it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, but, like, but I think the problem is we don't have, like, there is no test. There's, no, there's only one very simple example that just pushes a chat into, into the array. I think we need an example that does more and actually uses like nested objects of certain <coughs> types. Um, we don't have that. Is Firebase is Firebase downloadable as an open source thing, or is it just some kind of big platform? No, so so I don't actually want to use it like ongoing, but I think it's cool like right now okay. to to get similar functionality to Meteor running. Um, but so so the other thing that go on, Joe. Yeah, yeah, what's our long-term plan for having something open source? Because Firebase is completely proprietary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, so, so importantly, like Meteor have actually like created this sort of, D, I think it's called DDP, is, is their sort of protocol for data synchronization. And they're trying to make what, what Meteor does with MiniMongo um, like just generally a, an accepted standard. And there were attempts to implement it in like Postgres as well, which was quite what's going to happen, but I guess it's just going to be like an object. Um, so, so, so maybe the real answer is Meteor is going to contribute that to the world. Um, even if you don't use Meteor, we can probably use that. Um, that's a hope. But, go on, Karen. Because I mean, what, 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 I mean, I'm quite interested in Firebase. It looks, it looks kind of cool. I haven't really experienced much with it. But like, my experience has been that sync is really easy to do done and like pretty much impossible to automatically do good. <laughs> so like the Firebase just have like some amazing secret black box source or like is it still, you know, just like last right wins or whatever? Like how is there is there some kind of like application level strategy that you can implement to say like this is how you should resolve the same kind of like I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> um, but maybe maybe if Richard was still here, we could talk about that because he's actually using it professionally. Um, I have no idea. Okay. Um, as a 
there's a, there's a library called Simperion, if you guys know it, which does operational transform, or sort of which, you, which is basically the same. So it's not the last one, right? Same, is it? Oh, okay, cool. Is that part of Firebase or? That no, different. Right. It's the same page rep. Right, okay. Or well, there's open source share JS. Oh, yeah. Are there, are there examples of Firebase being used in a more complicated scenario so we can kind of test the theory as to whether they've just got good marketing or uh, <laughs> good code or? So I'm not saying Firebase doesn't work, just that the, I don't think MFire works No, well. no, I understand. But I mean, but again, I, I guess the question that Alex may have about, you know, are they solving a simpler problem uh, and putting some nice marketing on top of that, or are they solving a complex problem that's worth, you know, that, that, that's worth something? Because um, Firebase also, part of their service is you can, you can kind of encode permissions logic into your data store. There's a, there's a, a JSON format with which you can like say this like this part of your object tree has these certain permissions and has to fetch a user. And I haven't used it much personally. I've looked at the docs a little bit, but yeah, I mean they there's that kind of stuff to consider as well. So even if you do have a um, something like ShareJS and operational transform stuff, you still have to think about security and permissions. So I guess that's part of their offer as well as a platform. I mean, you do have to think about it though. Yeah. I think, I think the, one of the things is then you kind of date, tie, tie your data structure somehow into... Into it, this, yeah. Yeah, in order to get that permissioning. Um, so I have a dumb question, or I don't know if it's dumb or not, but um, does Firebase take advantage of WebSockets? Is, is that the way it's... No idea. It's backed by WebSockets, yes. It it's uses WebSockets. Web yeah. I think the client library will, will fall back to one polling and other solutions if, they're if WebSockets aren't available. Cool. Cool. Thank you.